Now let me move on to the next speaker. Uh, uh, Her Excellency uh, Tisita Mulugeta, Ambassador of the Federal Democratic Republic. She's the uh, only uh, lady in this panel. Uh, and uh, I uh, welcome you, Madam. Uh, let me read out very briefly, of course, apart from being the ambassador of uh, Ethiopia to India, uh, she's also accredited to Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, and Nepal. Uh, she's a PhD, grad, a PhD from University of Norway, and uh, uh, she's somewhat of a scholar from what I can gather. Uh, Excellency, uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, briefly, uh, two questions I would like you to address, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, India and Ethiopia, we have a, uh, a kind of a special relationship, you know, uh, especially when we talk about development partnership, Indian investment in the sugar industry and all that. Uh, people to people uh, relations are quite robust. Uh, at this point, you know, Ethiopia, apart from the bilateral relations, is also the headquarters of the African Union. From Addis, and this is a question. Uh, what does it look like to you, uh, you know, this, uh, the pandemic situation, uh, a big picture view, what is happening in Ethiopia, uh, what are your expectations from India? And going forward, uh, I will weave in a question because we may not have sufficient time later. Uh, this question uh, is from uh, uh, Ambassador Rajiv Bhatia, India's former High Commissioner uh, to South Africa. He asked her, what is the mood in Africa now that we are four, five months into uh, Corona age? Will it make the world less attentive to the needs of Africa in months to come? Over to you, Excellency. Warm greetings to Excellencies and uh, dignitaries. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizer who created such an opportunity to help to discuss on such a uh, important issues on Africa Day despite such challenging time. As it is said repeatedly, uh, the India-Africa relationship is nothing new. It dates back to centuries and uh, both were partners for long years. Both historically and uh, politically, India is one of the most important partners of Africa. And uh, after, Africa, uh, after India got uh, it is independent, it raised voices for African liberation taking their cases to all the available international fora. So uh, when we discuss about mapping the next step in uh, India-Africa partnership, we need to focus on some fundamental points, like uh, there is always a sense of solidarity between Africa and India from long period of time. And also there is a feeling of shared historical experiences among Africa and India because of uh, similar socioeconomic condition between Africa and India, common solutions can be found if they work together. And uh, in addition to that, there are some focus of interest to be considered from both Africa and India perspective. That is, uh, contemporarily, Africa is in the midst of change with a flow of big amount of uh, foreign direct investment. It is also a continent named as a new growth pole with competitive and visionary population and ample amount of natural resource. And also, uh, if we see uh, uh, economic development in Africa, six of the top fastest economies in the world, including Ethiopia, are found in Africa. And on the other hand, India is in a great nation with a consistent GDP growth, whereby its fast economic expansion can be an example of emerging Africa. And India has, has been a long partner for development in Africa. So uh, though this out, uh, the coronavirus outbreak uh, uh, put uh, the planned activities of uh, the Force Africa India Summit suspended for some time. It is my uh, personal belief that the cooperation will continue in a stronger manner than before because there is a common understanding that solidarity and international cooperation are more than ever necessary to address this pandemic. As different uh, sources uh, show, uh, so far African countries are taking different measures both individually and collectively to mitigate uh, uh, the virus. For instance, as a country, Ethiopia established high-level national COVID-19 preparation and response task force. A wide range of economic packages are designed to protect the most vulnerable section of the society, as well as sectors that have been adversely affected by the pandemic, 
and Ethiopia has also played a decisive role on behalf of Africa by requesting the G20 countries to grant debt relief and provision of COVID-19 emergency financing package to help even to cope with the health and economic emergency across the continent. Ethiopia has also dispatched COVID-19 packages uh, that has been uh, uh, provided by the uh, uh, foundation for 54 African countries. And also as a collective measures, we have heard that uh, several African leaders have, uh, has, have, have had a telephone conversation with Prime Minister uh, of uh, India and Prime Minister of India uh, conveyed his message that India will provide full support for the joint African effort against the virus. Even uh, with the phone call between Prime Minister of uh, India and Prime Minister of Ethiopia, uh, India also uh, uh, ensures that India will continue to support Ethiopia for ensuring supply of essential medicines and working on the economic impact of uh, the pandemic. So this conversation and message at a leader's level shows the strong solidarity between Africa and India leadership to combat the spread of the virus. And beyond this cooperation at, uh, at, at a leader's level, I believe there are several platforms of cooperation between Africa and India. That includes uh, health sectors, IT, energy, science, education, agriculture, and several kinds of trade partnership. For instance, from the perspective of uh, health sector, we know that India's health sector is one of the most relevant and influential responders of the crisis. And India is renowned as the world's largest generic pharmaceutical producer. And it is a significant supplier of PPE and other needed medicine. So, in addition to providing essential medicine, India can collaborate by providing technical support and training to African health workers and professionals in related to COVID, either in virtual or in another way. India also must consider providing scholarship and internship to medical students from African countries to enable local expertise. So far, many African countries have sent their scholar for uh, university education in India. Ethiopia has like more than 1,000 uh, students who have been taking care, who have been following their education in India, but none of them are in the medical uh, faculty. So uh, creating such uh, opportunity would strengthen the relationship between Africa and India, even to combat uh, the, the existing outbreak. Moreover, Indian investors who are interested in medical related investment, including pharmaceutical or hospital industry, can take this as an opportunity for mutual advantage. For instance, Ethiopian government provides several benefits of, uh, for such kind of investors. And uh, my government is welcoming those who are interested in health related sectors and work in public private partnership manner. In addition to that, government of Ethiopia is providing tax free advantage for importers who are interested to supply PPE. And I believe this is also a good opportunity for producers and exporters of uh, COVID related medicines and uh, personal protection equipment in India. In addition to that, uh, we, can, uh, the, uh, we, we can create a platform in terms of enhancing Africa India trade partnership. Currently, India is the fourth largest trading partner of Africa. Uh, However, uh, the trade balance between many African countries and India is against Africa, which is expected to be worsening during COVID-19. However, with more transparency and collaboration, Africa and India can enhance the trade partnership. The other platform could be uh, food production and processing, especially in the agriculture sector, as COVID gives many countries an opportunity to check how far they can be self-reliant in many aspects, Africans can also take this as an opportunity to revisit their food production capacity and diversification. Currently, many countries, including Ethiopia, are working towards being self-reliant in food production. And this would be a very good opportunity for many investors who has interest in agriculture, especially in crop production and food processing area. In relation to food production, I want also to emphasize that the current desert locust outbreak uh, is, uh, is expected to create severe impact in crop production in East Africa, including Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, and the Middle East, and also in India. But I believe that 
India is also, even if India is uh, also vulnerable in this aspect, it is uh, in a more uh, uh, better technical capacity to deal on the manner and uh, uh, to collaborate and to partnership with many African uh, countries. The other issue uh, is finance. Finance is also an uh, essential element for combating the virus and undertaking uh, development work. So uh, Africa and India need to closely work to make possible and enhance it effective and even speedy implementation of agreements on the line of credit that was made available by the government of India. Exim Bank of India should see different ways of financing initiatives and easing date repaying time to assist African countries. In this regard, as Exim Bank of India is one of Ethiopian economic partners, Ethiopian government had formally requested the Exim Bank of uh, India to suspend and rescheduled and repaid its date over long, long years. And my government is expecting a positive response to this uh, uh, kind request. And strengthening cooperation in safeguarding international peace and security, which is indispensable for real change and transformation in post uh, COVID uh, is also one of uh, the issues that should be taken into consideration as a form of collaboration. And among all this, uh, further building strong people-to-people -people relation between people of Africa, people of Ethiopia and India, so as to for, uh, foster shared values and experiences sharing in the area of art, music, film, production can be, can be another form of uh, platform for uh, collaboration. Uh, last but not least, I want to stress on India's role in multilateralism on the international stage as an active leader amid the COVID-19 pandemic. India has been playing a major role as a humanitarian leader in this pandemic. It has been shipping tons of medical supply to nations in need. India proactively taking coordinating actions across bilateral, regional, and multilateral fronts by reaching out to a number of leaders to coordinate cooperation against the pandemic. India has been calling strengthening of the WHO powers and urged G20 leaders to support a new human-centric view of globalization. And Prime Minister uh, Modi also addressed in the virtual non-aligned movement uh, summit uh, that countries to discuss global management of COVID-19 and called for solidarity, okay? So this clearly shows how the Indian government gave special consideration to approach the pandemic and to understand the aggressive impact the virus will create in world socioeconomic situation. In such a way, India could be a voice for Africa to urge international organization and most developed nations to quickly deliver the appropriate international financial assistance, date relief to cope with the health and economic emergency, as well as to combat and mitigate the negative impact of COVID-19 across the continent. Thank you so much for listening.